Hi, the last video I did was using a Mac. So today I'm going to show you how to do things using a PC. So now you should be able to see all the things that I you can do exactly mirroring me. So the first thing I want you to do is to go to your yellow folder down here. You should have a folder that says photography. You would have set one up. I'm going to show you how to set up a folder. So for example, say I'm in GCSE photography, I would go to home. So you may not get these icons here, but you need to go to home. You need to go to new folder and you need to name that folder Maxime Manga. Okay. Everything you do should be saved into that folder. So I'm going to delete this because I don't need this, but you need to set up a folder first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go into Google Classroom, you're going to look for Maxine Manga, you're going to go for Jova Transparent PNG. If you haven't got it already, some of you have a Jova PNG, just make sure it has the transparent background, which is denoted by these grey and white squares. You right click on it, save image as, and you make sure you find your Maxime Manga folder. It should be a PNG file, and you may want to change it to Maxime Manga Trans if you want to, or you can just save it as Jova Trans, that's fine. Just to let you know, I didn't cut it out properly, so you'll have to do a little bit of cleaning up with the eraser tool. Okay. So that was saved directly into that folder. Now, let's go back to Photoshop. You want to do File, New. You want to make sure that you get the A4 file with a white background. You want to make sure it's 300 pixels per inch and it's 8 bit. Remember, yours looks a little bit different to mine for some reason. So you go to International Paper, then A4. So you've got the drop downs. You should have this on there. If you want to, you can give it a preset. Call it GCSE A4 Portrait, and that should come up on your list. Okay. Great. There you go. That's your white sheet of paper. Now, we want to save this file, save as, and we want to save it into our Maxime Manga folder because this is going to be our experiment. So it's going to be Maxime manga now yours is going to be one as you can see i've already done two experiments so mine's going to be three but if this is your first one you're going to call it one i'm going to call it three because i've done three and make sure it's photoshop psd okay so should look like this and it should be in your maxi manga folder and save so everything we do on this will be your maxi manga work so I'm now going to do file, open, and I want to find that transparent image. There's that transparent PNG file. It's in my Maxi Manga folder. I'm going to open it. As you can see, it's got the gray and white squares in the back. So I know that I can click on my move tool up here, click here, and I can drag him onto here. And I can see that I still have a white background. I want to change the size of him. I want him to fill more of the frame. So I'm going to do Control T. Control T. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, do Edit, Transform, Scale. Edit, Transform, Scale. Quicker way to do it though is Control T. And you get the handles. Always change size from the corner. Okay. And I've decided I want him about there, looks about central, and press enter. And then he will look clear again. I can already see that there's bits here that need tidying up, but I will see what needs tidying up when I change my background. Okay, I'm going to change my background colour now. Because Maxime Manga usually has quite brightly coloured background. So we're going to try and try change the background. So I'm going to go to my background layer here. So I'm going to click on that. Remember, it grays out the layer you are on. I'm going to get my paint bucket tool. Now, your paint bucket tool is here. 
So usually it's defaulted to your gradient tool here. But you're going to do the paint bucket. So you're going to right click and get the paint bucket, not the 3D, the paint bucket. Okay, then you're going to click here on the top layer and you're going to pick your background color. So I'm going to go today for bright yellow. Okay, so paint bucket, your top color swatch, okay, color picker. If you've got a color you, you know you want, you can pick using the little color picker here, but we're going to go with bright yellow. You can go for anywhere along the spectrum. You've got millions of colors to choose from. And you're going to say, okay. So it's still on that background layer and I color it in. But look at that. Paints it all that yellow color. And then I'm just going to get the eraser and I'm just going to go onto this layer, which the young boy is on. And I'm going to clean that up a little it doesn't matter if it's a bit scrappy we're going to paint over it obviously when you're doing your own work i want you to be a bit neater but this is just practicing how to use maxine and good work now i'm going to teach you a technique which will help you with something later on looking at stenciling um some people quite like using a stencil technique you can obviously paint over him as he is but I'm going to show you how to do an almost cut out stencil. So image adjustments, black and white. So that's image adjustments, black and white. We've done that so many times, but there he is, he's black and white. Now we're going to make the whites whiter and the dark tones darker. So the white tones whiter and the dark tones darker. So you have a contrast of white, dark and light tones a real contrast of dark and light tones so we're going to do image adjustments and we're going to go to levels okay this is your histogram it shows you where your dark tones are and where your light tones are you see if i go this way i'm going to go to about 118 there okay so it's this little arrow here and i'm going to go to about 118 it's made my dark tones very dark. Now I want my light tones to be lighter. So I'm going to move that to the left. And can you see that's almost like a cutout? Yep. It's up to you how far you go. I would go up to about 174. So you can still kind of see the nose and the mouth, but it makes the darks darker and the light tones lighter. Then when you're happy, press OK. So now we've got our cutout. We've got our background. We're going to start painting. You get your paintbrush tool. There. Okay. If it's not there, you just right click and try and find it. If you're not sure where it is, press B on your keyboard. So say I'm on the eraser. If I press B on my keyboard, it will take me to the paintbrush. Okay. You can see here that my brush is going to be that wide. So if I pick a color. Let me just pick a color. I'm going to pick a contrasting color. So I'm going to go for black. I'm on that background layer. It's going to be that wide. Okay. It's quite wide. Also, if your paintbrush looks like this, it looks like a crosshair. That means you've got your caps lock on. You take your caps lock off, you'll see your brush. I learned that trick because I kept losing my caps lock. Now, what we don't want to do is paint on this layer. We paint on this layer. Sorry, on this layer, I can't move that. I can only move him with that on, okay? I also can't, I have to delete it to do something. So every time you paint, you do a new layer. Layer, new layer. Okay, so now I've got that layer, all right? So I'm now gonna get my paintbrush. And I know that Maxine Manga does kind of like the stitches down the neck. So I'm going to paint those with black. Okay. And I'm going to rename that layer stitches. Okay. Now that's fine. I'm going to do layer, new layer. And I'm going to call this one cross over eye. Because I now know that I'm going to do a cross over his eye. I want it red. 
I'm going to pick a nice bright red. I want my brush a little bigger. Okay, so I'm still on my brush, still there with my color, and I'm getting my color size. So I know this is the cross over the eye. It's going to do a cross over the eye. Okay, so now I've got a cross over the eye. Now, I now want to do, I've now decided I want those stitches to be moved a little bit across. So I click on that layer, I go to move, decided I want them slightly across there. Now, if you'd have drawn right directly onto this layer, you couldn't have done that. Okay, so each time, new layer. Each time you do something, you create a new layer. And since as I've done, I'm now on my one, two, three, four, five layers, I'm going to do Control S and save it. Okay, so that's just saved it. So every time, every few things, just make sure you save it so you don't lose it. Now I'm going to use the triangle tool. I've got loads of different shape tools here, but I'm going to use the triangle tool. I'm going to go for a turquoise. And I'm going to make triangles under his eye, like that. Okay. Now, that's my triangle. And I want to do select. I just need to remember how to rasterize. Rasterize. Shape rasterize. There we go. Okay. So I need to rasterize that layer so I can move it. So that is view filter. Sorry, this is convert for smart filter. Select. Let me just find it. View. This is something I always forget how to do. I'm very sorry. Okay. Layer. Okay, I will find out how to do that. If you're not sure how to do something, you just go to how. Photoshop how. And you just type in what you need to do. So you need to rasterize the layer. Okay. So I'm going to do, because he does these little teardrops under it. So I'm going to do layer, duplicate layer, because I want that same thing. So I've got now two copies of them. I'm going to do it there. I'm going to move it around. So I do control T. So I could just move it around like that. Okay. So I've now got shapes on there. So we've got triangle, and I'm going to call that triangle. There we go. Okay, so now I want to do the halo. Okay. So I'm going to do layer, new layer. Okay, now it doesn't matter if it's wobbly, it doesn't matter if your hand is wobbly, we're going to try and draw a halo. Okay, so we're going to draw it coming out from the back of his head and go around like that. Okay, and we've got that, and we're going to do little lines coming out like that okay now we might want to do something to his shirt so I'm going to get a white brush oh that's halo I'm going to do layer new layer okay we're going to do shirt What haven't I done for a little one? I haven't do, done Control S to save it. And you can see that it quickly pops up there that it's saving. So I'm going to try a different brush now. I'm going to try the paint box. Let's see. Oh, that's a blender. We can't use that. That blends. So let's. I quite like these brushes, the screen tone ones. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to, on his shirt, I'm just going to make, I want that to be white. Okay. Is it to be 100%? That's the wrong. Is that not going to do it? All right, there we go. So, I want the brush a little bit bigger. I'm just going to do some different colored lines here. You can see it's just on his shirt. It doesn't go into the background. Okay. There we go. And we can change the color. Hopefully it will change the color. I've never used this. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, that's because this is black and white. If I want to do it a color on the background, I can then go to the background. You can see it's white. Let's change the color. 
can do green around there. Okay. This is simply about learning how to use the different brushes. Okay. I'm, I will admit, this isn't my strong point. Um, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. I've seen some amazing work from you guys already, so I'm sure you can do this way better than me, most of you. So I'm looking forward to seeing how creative you actually get with this. So remember, you have to be on the layer you want to color in, okay? But you don't do that. You go here, we do layer, new layer. And then we do green highlights, perhaps. And we do, oops, if this is what you choose to do, okay? Because remember, I can always click on the move. Oops. Make sure I'm on the green highlights. It's going to be very hard to move them around, though. To move them around, you'd have to do Control T, and then you could possibly move. No, it won't let me. Because they're see-through, it's very hard to move things like the highlights, I'm afraid. Okay. So once you're happy with that, once you've decided, yeah, I think I've done enough to this image, you can use the different shape tools. You can just do, oh, no, what did I do wrong? Layer, new layer. Okay. I'm going to get my shape tool. I'm going to do a triangle here. So I know some of you may like doing crowns. This would be a better way, perhaps, of doing a crown. So I'm going to layer, duplicate layer. This might be a better way of doing a crown, just so it's a bit neater. Layer, duplicate layer. So you've got those three together. You might want to, if you hold down the shift key, hold up, click on the top one, hold down the shift click key and click on the bottom one, then right click, you should be able to merge shapes, okay? And that merges them as one. And then I'm gonna drag that under his head. I don't want it over his head. There we go. Now we've got a little crown there for him, if you feel like doing that. Okay. If you want to get, if you don't, if you want to see what it looks like without the layer, you can just click on the eye and that takes it off. If you're not happy with a layer, right click on it, delete it. But I personally would just hide it until you're finalized with your image, otherwise you'll have to do it again. Once you're happy with your image, layer, flatten image. File, save as, and finally change that to JPEG. Not JPEG 2000, just JPEG. And then save it, okay? And then remember, you must put it onto your workbook. 